Hey guys, Corey at Prestige Motorsports. Uh, we're going to go a little behind the scenes on what we do on the development side of cylinder heads, especially when we're starting from scratch. There are so many unknowns and we're just trying to give you some insights of the stages that we go through. So we're going to take you through step by step on where we go. Alright guys, so on this stage here, basically this is the start of it. Um, what we've got is our new Brodex Headhunters. And what we're doing right now is establishing our ballast spacing. Uh, that's the most critical part at this stage of it. So what we do is put it in the centroid, we go ahead and scan the intake and exhaust center lines. That way there I know my ballast spacing. And in the next stage of it, I'll show you what that correlates onto our master cam into our solid works process from there. All right, guys, so we just got the head off the CNC machine. Um, basically, I got the scan data from our valve spacing, the intake and the exhaust valve spacing. And what we're seeing up here is the different combinations of our valve spacing, the difference between the intake and exhaust, that gap in between. We don't want to see too tight of a distance in between there because once you're running it and all that stuff, you can have a situation where they start clipping each other and that's a no-go. So what you've got in this application like you can see here, you got a 2180 intake valve with a 1625 exhaust valve that gives you a distance of basically 30 thousandths. And that's a little bit too tight for what our tolerance is like, what we like for our tolerance. We try not to go below that. Um, then you can also see here in a different combination, a 2180 intake valve and a 1570 exhaust valve gives us almost a 60 thousandths clearance. That's a little bit too big. So we try to kind of work within these windows right here and I try to come up with a, di a good combination of what's going to be the best performance for an NA application, a turbo application and so forth. Um, so pretty much and also too you have to take in consideration of the intake seat ring and the exhaust seat ring side. With this particular case right here we got a 2250 intake seat and a 1650 exhaust seat. We try not to have our valves within 40 thousandths of that maximum diameter. So at that particular case, with the 2250 intake, our max valve would be a 2210. Uh, with a 1650 exhaust seat, we're gonna have a max valve of a 1610. Well, you can see here with these combinations, that really doesn't work with the spacing that we want. So what we've done, and I'm gonna get ready to show you here on the next step, of creating valves because that's our biggest hurdle right now is getting the valves. The lead time on valves is anywhere from 10 to 16 weeks on a custom made valve. So we want to make sure that we got the right valve before we place our order because that's critical because you start buying 100 sets of valves and they're wrong, eh, that's not good. So I'll go ahead and show you with our next phase here on um, what we've come up with on developing our valves. Okay, so we figured out what our valve combinations that we like to see. Now the next phase of it is, okay, what kind of valve angle are we going to use? What kind of underhead are we going to use? What's our margin thickness? What's all these variables that we need to, one, test on the flow bench to figure out what we really want, and then two, so we can order the correct one. So what we've come up with is basically a, a puck system. So what we're going to do is we're going to turn this valve down and basically create a threaded insert on the end of this valve right here. So we turn that down, we're gonna have that threaded right here, and then we're gonna make aluminum pucks. This is an aluminum puck. Aluminum puck, that'll screw right onto the valve. So then I can go back, I can go on the flow bench, I can test the different combinations. If I want a 10 degree underhead, a 20 degree underhead, 12 degree underhead, I mean, it's just, it's endless on what we want to do based off of our valve size combination. On this particular case, I'm going to go with the 2200 and a 1570 valve combination that gives me almost a 50 thousandths clearance in between the intake and exhaust. So what you see here is that valve puck, and then what you do is you just come in here and it's just going to screw right onto the valve, and then what I can do is I'll go through and change to a different valve. I can flow it, I can do all these things to establish like, hey, this is what we want. We go ahead and place our order with the manufacturers that we so choose, either Victory or Exceldyne or anything like that. 
we know exactly what we're getting when we actually get the valves from the manufacturer. All right, guys, so this gives you a little bit better detail of what's going on with these pucks. So here is a 2200 uh, aluminum puck that I've designed. I'm going to show you the difference between a 2100, or sorry, excuse me, a 2200 and a 2180, um, different undercuts, uh, different seat angles, and all that stuff, but a little bit more detailed picture of what's going on here. Um, so there's an exploded view of what we have. This is the difference between the two. So the yellow right there, that is the 2180 with a 10 degree underhead, and the brown here, or the gray, that's a 2200 with a 10 degree underhead on it. And you can see the difference right here. So now when we order valves, I can go, before we even order valves, I can go test it, all this stuff on the flow bench to know exactly that's ex what we want, what we're shooting for, for our flow numbers, for our velocity, volume, and everything else along that line. So uh, if you guys have any questions, uh, please feel free to ask, and looking forward to talking to you guys. See ya.